tax collectors, and peasants. So how do we measure up to Christ's preferential option for the poor? Now I'm sure you've all heard about the budget deficit our state of Nebraska faces in the coming year. But brothers and sisters, while I am confident our leaders will find a way to balance the budget, I'm sadly fearful that we will balance the budget on the backs of the least among us, those in the most need of essential services. I'm sorely afraid our leaders will show a preferential option for the rich instead of the poor. For example, it is likely that folks on Medicaid will lose dental coverage, but yet country club membership fees are not taxed in Nebraska as they are in other states. Sadly, despite many of our leaders nationwide in both parties and in all the other parties professing to be Christian, few have read, marked, learned, or inwardly digested the message of Christ's life. On the cross, we see the kingship of Christ in his nonviolent resistance to the powers that be. On the cross, we witness someone with true power, godly power, the absolute ability to obliterate all who oppose him. But like a lamb, he is led to slaughter. See, it's hard for us living in Omaha to understand this story. See, we live in a part of, the, part of the country where the myth of the cowboy and the winning of the West occurred. In the American cowboy story, the good guy, when he is outnumbered and outgunned, makes a valiant stand against the opposition and dies a hero's death, having taken out as many of the enemy on the way out as possible, or somehow, miraculously, killing all of the enemy and walking away unscathed. This is our myth, but it is not the story of Jesus. Jesus is the lamb led to the slaughter. He refuses to yield to the fallen forces, urging him to violently destroy the Romans. Instead, he says, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Hey, y'all, in this week of Thanksgiving, I am truly thankful that Jesus says this. I'm eminently thankful these words are in the Bible because we continue to respond to violence with yet more violence, which only creates even more violence. I do not need to recount for you the tragedy of our most recent wars. I do not need to tell you of the lives lost on all sides the soldiers who will forever be maimed or scarred mentally or physically because you and I asked them to fight. I need not tell you that all wars are fought over money and power and never over human rights, injustice, or a preemptive defense against a perceived threat. Lord, forgive us, but we have no clue what we are doing, indeed. Finally, in the resurrection, we see Christ's kingdom and God's ultimate forgiveness. This is the good part, y'all. Because see, like any, unlike any other story in history, when Christ is killed, he comes back and he's not vengeful or angry. Y'all, if you nailed me to a tree, I would, would want to take you behind the barn and have a conversation. <laughs> But yet Jesus, who had every right to be mad at his disciples for abandoning him, calls out Peter and says, Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Jesus, who has every right and would be justified in ending all of creation for revenge sake alone, who would be justified in ending it all, says go into the world and preach the good news. Tell folks the kingdom of God has come, where we need not pamper the rich by making the poor suffer. The abundant kingdom has come, where we need not fight wars over limited resources. Go into the world and tell folks they are forgiven, they are loved, despite their ignorance, despite not knowing what they do, 
despite God knowing the truth, they are love. But brothers and sisters, that is why we celebrate Christ the King this day. Because we are forgiven. We are loved. Despite our ignorance, despite not knowing what we do, despite God knowing the truth about you and you and you and me alone for sure, we are loved. God forgives us for we know not what we do. My brothers and sisters, come to God's table and rejoice in God's forgiveness. Because like the old hymn says, my sin. Oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. My brothers and sisters, walk that aisle this day and come to God's table, not for solace alone, but for strength. Walk that aisle and pledge allegiance to the true king. Walk that aisle as a broken sinner who knows not what he or she is doing. And so that you can go into the world and proclaim God's love to the farthest reaches of the earth. From the person next door and to the people on the other side of the planet, let your life proclaim that they are loved. My brothers and sisters, this day we will be with God in paradise. In the here and now, if we but walk that aisle and receive what we already are, the body and blood of Christ Jesus.